A challenge from a raisin farmer goes all the way to the Supreme Court in a bid to stop the federal government from seizing his dried fruit crop. The case centers around a nearly 80-year-old law. William Lajeunesse live in Los Angeles with that. William. Well, John, this is one of those you've got to be kidding me stories. Well, actually, I'm not. One man is raising hell over U.S. raisin policy. It requires every farmer to put into a government reserve any and all raisins that exceed a certain amount for free. It dates back to World War II when the government wanted to stabilize the raisin market. But today, this California farmer, Marvin Horn, says the law serves no purpose. And when he ignored it, the feds literally tried to seize his raisins to give away or send overseas. The feds now claim that he owes them 700 grand or years of his crop that exceeded the government cap. Now, Horn claims that this violates the Fifth Amendment that says that the government shall not take private property for public use without just compensation. All I wanted to do as a farmer is to grow my grapes, make raisins, and clean and stem them and sell them myself. Ah, but the government argues, and I'm quoting from their brief, in an unregulated market, annual supply fluctuations combined with static domestic demand creates price instability, which is precisely what occurred in the raisin industry before the law was passed. But critics say this is absurd. The government doesn't confiscate surplus tomatoes. Why should the Federal Raisin Committee, yes, there is one, regulate raisins? This is like a raisins OPEC. They decide how many raisins should be out there. They also promote raisins. They have raisin uh, website, raisins.org, that tells you re recipes for raisins. And they try and keep the price stable for the benefit of raisin farmers, not so much for the benefit of consumers. So you can stop laughing or crying. The question before the court is actually important. This isn't about raisins, but rights. Does the takings clause of the Fifth Amendment, John, protect personal property, not just land from government confiscation, which, of course, we've seen with eminent domain in the Kelo decision? Back to you. And the feds want almost three quarters of a million dollars from this guy. That's right. Or about four years of his raising crop. Unbelievable. William Lajeunesse, keep us updated. Thanks.